Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be talking about Nepenthes Hamada. It is one of the most requested um, Nepenthes videos that I um, have gotten in recent, um, in the recent while anyways. Um, so I wanted to talk about the care and culture of Nepenthes Hamada. I love these plants, it is probably my, my favorite Nepenthes. It's just um, so recognizable, so gorgeous, um, so amazing. I really really like them. This one here is one of my favorites that I have personally. It's not that big of a plant. You can see the leaf to picture ratio is huge. So most of my plants, they grow, my hamadas are over this way uh, in the back corner. So it's really bright and sunny behind you, which is facing south. And that's the north wall, sort of the, the shady corner of the north wall there is where, where these guys are growing. And that's where they like it. They... Um, they don't like it bright and sunny, I find. They tend to go red really easily from from extra light. And I try to keep them a nice green color. Uh, if they go red, their leaves actually get a little bit smaller. And they, they kind of go blotchy. And it's just not quite as nice looking. So I like to have a nice green leaf on my plant if I can help it. And yeah, I think the plants like it as well. So why don't we go over to the back corner there. And I will show you. There's There's a handful of plants over there with a handful of pictures and we'll have a look at them and I'll put this guy back where he belongs while we're we're doing it. Okay, here we are. So, this is where they grow. It's fairly shady around here. I'm going to try to tuck this plant back in where it was. The black tubes you see are the irrigation because I don't want to forget to water these plants. So, they just have drippers in the pots and it works really good for them. There we go. Put that guy back down here. And as you can see, there's um a lot of hamadas going on here. The light's right above them, but it's right at the corner of it. So uh, where to start? We might as well start with the lighting since we're talking about lighting. They do like it shaded. Um, this is the, the very end of two T8 bulbs. They're just cool white. Keep in mind I'm in the greenhouse so I get natural light as well. They do get some direct sunlight. Um, in the wintertime it really um, isn't all that much. But in the summertime they do get a couple hours of direct sunlight still. On the cool side of the greenhouse the air conditioner is very close to them. It's just up that way. Um, and like I say they're at the back. Sort of at the shadiest part of the greenhouse. If I had to pick a shady part this would be it. And uh, they, they do wonderfully. You can see a whole bunch of basil shoots coming out here. The main vine is going up here behind the bamboo skewer. And there's a bunch of all these are basil pitchers that are in here. They come out as a nice size. There's um see this big guy here that's kind of like photobombing the little guys. Can't get him out. He's so stuck in there. Let's see. There we go. That is from the main plant that is um going up. And there's another good size one from the main plant as well. I would say these guys will grow under Phalaenopsis light, maybe slightly brighter. Somewhere around 500 foot candles seems to work well for them. They really get red and blotchy easily. I just moved this guy over here and he's kind of red and blotchy like I just moved him the, like the other day. Um, so he's going to be a bit happier over here. This is where I move all my, my bigger plants. These guys do vine and if you look up there's an upper picture. It's just kind of a, a free for all up there. Here's an upper, here's another upper. The light starts to get way, way brighter up there as well. So as the vines um, grow, just like they would in the wild, they get more and more light as they can make it through the canopy of the other bushes. And so they're, they're at the ceiling up there. So they're like eight and a half feet above my head to the vines, but they're starting on a, a four foot shelf. So they're not literally like eight and a half foot vines. What else can I tell you? They're planted in mainly sphagnum moss. I did grow them in live moss to start with, but I've been slowly kind of taking it out because the live moss was just like taking over. I couldn't see the plants anymore. Um, and I just found the whole point of, um, I didn't want to lose my plants in the moss. It looked like I was just kind of growing moss here. So I recently weeded a lot of my, my sphagnum moss out. They do love it. I found um, they, they love to root in it. So it's really positive that way, but um, they kind of get lost in it too. So each to their own. As for watering, it is on a timer um, that's controlled by my phone, so I can water it myself whenever I want to. In the summertime, I can water it um, daily or semi-daily automatically, so I don't forget. Um, they don't like to dry out. They have very thin papery leaves. 
and thin papery pictures compared to a lot of them a lot of nepenthes and they just they don't do well in drought not at all um, they don't mind the heat this side of the greenhouse gets to 30 celsius pretty easily that is just over 80 fahrenheit almost 85 fahrenheit for you fahrenheit people um, and they do well as long as they get a nighttime drop in temperature they get some natural insect prey in the greenhouse not tons, but um, I'm sure a lot of the pictures have have stuff in them. I don't do a whole lot of feeding other than that. I don't use Red Sea or a Red Sea. I don't use um, Max C. Um, I I will occasionally you use like a liquid fertilizer on them, like uh, uh, seaweed fertilizer at about one quarter strength. And a lot of times I'll just do a fuller spray. I've tried Osmo Coat in the pictures. And again, I find target an old picture if you're going to do it because it really melts the new pictures quickly. It, so I found I was losing a lot of pictures that way. And they just, they do great. As I say, they get natural insects in here and they take minuscule amounts of um, insects to really survive. So what else can I tell you? We talked about um, the light. We talked about watering. It's humid in my greenhouse and this corner is no different. In the summertime, it's maintained at about 85 to 95 percent humidity all the time and it really lets them picture very nicely so you can see a few different um, clones in here a few different um, shapes and colors and stuff like that this is a glandulifera across bosciano photobombing it it's kind of coming off the light and i can't do anything about it it's just kind of stuck there until that picture is gone um what else can i tell you most of them are in four inch square pots uh, the bigger ones that are basiling, basiling in the back there are in eight, no, six inch square pots. I change out the media every two years if I can. I'm going to just like, I don't even know when these things were done. So we're going to go down. This one is a BE Hamada 1016. So that one has got plenty of life left in it. This one here is a Stuba Hamada. And we're still at a 116. So... That has plenty of life left in it but yeah i don't like to um let them go more than about two years without repotting they don't mind acidic media so i'm not too worried about that at first but um the roots can only handle so much acidic media we'll do one more tag here 12 15 there so that one is gonna um, need to be repotted that's two years so we're yeah that one's um gonna be on my list for doing this year how I'm going to do this, I'm actually going to leave these plants in place as they are. I'll clear out the front row of plants and I'm basically going to, um, with some extra hands, suspend the pot just like four inches up above the, the, the shelf, pull the pot out, slip a tray underneath of it, take out all the media with my hands. I'm not going to move this plant over to the sink. I'm then going to, once the media is out, have my new media ready, slip the new pot in, have the roots go in, backfill the media slowly as I'm watering it to make sure it's um, nicely refilled and go from there because these plants hate to move but um, the biggest mistake people can make is when they, they get, their plants get so big they can't repot them and um, they just keep letting them go and go and go and eventually the media sours and the roots rot and the plant dies and you don't realize it's dying until it's too late I'm just now digging for the other tag I'm gonna have to find out when that last one was, um, there's three here, three big ones, when this one was done last. And um, I might be redoing that one this year too. But anyways, so the media is just a sphagnum, orchid bark, perlite mix. We wanna keep it a little bit fluffy and airy with some live sphagnum on top. And yeah, that is Nepenthe somata. Cool, humid, and shaded. Just how it likes it, right at the tail end of the, um, the lights and you know, these ones under the light don't do much better or any better than these ones just outside the light here. So I hope you like this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching.